Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. It's funny how my business runs. Uh, for months and months you don't see a direct drive and then you see two different direct drives in a matter of a day. So the last video I did was the Ocean City slash Macy's direct drive reel and uh, Bob sent in uh, the Pen 190 which is also a direct drive reel. What do we mean by that? There's no drag system. This is main gear, goes to spool gear, drives, goes front and back. We talked about it uh, on the other one, it's ambidextrous. You can drive it from the left or drive it from the right. It's man against fish. There's nothing in between there. Now, the old knuckle busters, and I'll review this if you haven't seen the other one. The old knuckle busters were called that because if you casted and uh, you weren't paying attention, that handle would hit you in the knuckle. But uh, these were the earlier editions. No free spool release at all. These became the modified edition where you have a free spool release so that when you're casting at least the uh, the reel will go backwards without the uh, should be without the, uh, the the gear moving backwards or slamming you in the knuckles. So we're going to uh, take a look at this. This is in the uh, I believe it's in the Baymaster series with the one this is the 190. There's the uh, 180, the 160, the 155. Uh, Bay and Beachmaster series. I believe this one's in the Baymaster, but I'm not quite certain on the naming of that one. But let's get started with this one, and we'll go, to, go ahead and uh, show Bob how to do this for future uh, references. So, this one has a screw as opposed to a handle screw that has a, uh, a more traditional uh, uh, topping that you would use a wrench on. Uh, and all you have to do is back this off. In this case, this one came out easy. I would caution you, if it doesn't come out easy, go ahead and spray it with some uh, penetrating oil. Let it sit for a bit and come back after maybe a cup of coffee or something to loosen it up. These are old reels by their nature. These are from the 50s and earlier in some cases. And you don't, uh, don't find a lot of pieces of parts around for these. So don't, uh, don't go crazy trying to wrench something out. Let the uh, penetrating oil do the work if uh, you're having difficulty. Okay, we're going to pull the side plate off then. We'll show you how this is set up underneath. You'll notice that I'm wearing my uh, protective glove here on my left hand. Uh, I've said from time to time that I wish I could use it on my working hand, but it just gets in the way and I don't have good control over my tools or the small pieces and parts. But uh, I figure half is better than none, and given that uh, my left hand seems to be the one that's always involved with uh, greasing and oiling and junk, I guess it's... Uh, it's a good thing that I can at least protect that. So there's two types of screws on these reels. Uh, the cross post screws are longer than the reel seat screws. You can see it here. Just remember that when you put this back together. You'll notice that there is a difference here between the two. Small ones go below. That's because if you put the long ones below, they'd be sticking out of the reel seat on the back side of the reel. And uh, the line could catch those. If it catches it, you'd have a snag. Okay, so this very much looks like everything you've seen on a uh, on a pen series reel, uh, with the exception that uh, you're not going to have an anti reverse in this one. Okay, so on this side, uh, this one hasn't been worked on in a while, and uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put some grease into the side plate cover where the stud goes. I'm going to put a little bit on the spool shaft on that side, a little bit on the spool shaft on this side. This one's clean. If you needed to clean it up a little bit more, you could uh, you could use the WD-40. You could use uh, some steel wall, but this one overall is clean and uh, no action necessary there. So let's go over and take this apart. You'll see the difference uh, on this and a, and a more traditional bridge. But this is set up just like the... Um, the other Bay Masters of Beach Masters series, or even Long Beach, it all pretty much has the same thing. The top two screws are uh, through screws. They have uh, springs that sit on top of them, or they go through springs. That controls the eccentric or the free spool release. The bottom two hold the bridge together. If it has an anti reverse, that's where that would be. In this case, uh, there is no any reverse. This is a solid gear. I'm just going to go see if I, I have a bridge around just to show you quickly the difference. 
So here's the difference of what we're looking at on this. This one is a Pen 200 bridge, the uh, uh, Surfmaster. And uh, you'll notice there's a drag stack in here. There's a uh, furrow to put pressure on the drags. And there's the main gear. And if you look at this one, there is none. This is a solid piece of machined metal that has the stud and the gear built right in it. No drags. This one has uh, would use an anti-reverse. This one has no anti-reverse. All right, so let's clean this up then. I showed you that steel wool before. I'm going to grab a little bit of uh, metal polish here. This one just happens to be an automotive chrome polish. I'm just going to try and get some of the tarnish off of the old bridge here, just to keep it working smoothly. We're also working on the shaft to make sure that any dried greases that were on that shaft are uh, removed. Just grabbing a paper towel. I prefer to work with paper towels than rags. Uh, paper towels are disposable. It doesn't hold the, uh, the old junk and grease and grime that you may have taken from uh, another reel. And uh, I like that because uh, you're not transferring it from one reel to another. All right, here we go. We're cleaning that up now. Now this does have an oil hole in it. Uh, as a kind of an interim step, you can open up the handle, take that uh, screw off, put a drop of oil in there and keep this uh, lubed. Since I have the reel apart, we're going to put a thin coating of the uh, reel grease on there. In this case, it's just a Penn Universal uh, uh, reel grease. Give it a couple of spins. I'm going to set that aside. Now, this is the traditional uh, eccentric spring yoke and a yoke spring setup that's on almost every pen reel, or at least the pen reels of the time. So we want to remove this assembly by pressing down on the yoke, pulling out the jack, taking the two springs off. This is your eccentric spring, which controls the tension on the free spool release and the eccentric. I'm just going to give this a quick shot. This side plate is very clean, but we'll give it a quick shot just to do some house cleaning here. Get some of the stuff up maybe we can't see. Use a cotton swab where you can't, uh, can't reach easily. They fit nicely around that uh, side plate. All right, this nice and clean. We'll go ahead and put some grease onto the bearing holder. Put some grease up top on the eccentric. So that, that operates smoothly and transferring the jack. Make sure the jack is clean, which it is. You can use some steel wool just to get some some dried grease off of it if it exists. I'm doing this more for an illustration. These are clean. Do the same thing here. Now normally I would have put those springs into my parts tray, but I didn't. So I'm being very careful to watch it that I don't knock them off as I go ahead with this house cleaning stuff. But uh, I knew I'd be right back to it. So we're going to grab that grease again. That's going to be the grease for the spool bearing. And we can, uh, we can go ahead and reassemble. So I'm going to grab the spool bearing. Next thing I want to do is make sure that all the teeth in that spool bearing are clean and they're not shipped or bent or in some way a problem for the uh, performance. And then you'll notice that there is a slot in the spool bearing, a uh, spool gear. And that slot is going to sit on top of the spool. So uh, that faces out. Okay, so we're set up for this to reassemble then. Simply put a spring in each corner. They're recessed holes. And we're reversing the process of how we took this out then. Two springs. The yoke assembly. The jack. operation and that's how we found it. Since we've already lubed this there's nothing more to do here. There's no anti-reverse in this reel or anything. This simply plugs in, sits over the top. You can align the holes and then what I do with this is four screws. Two screws are partially threaded. Two screws are fully threaded. I notice that there's a little bit of greening on that so I'm just going to put some of that W. 40 on there. As we go in, it'll just keep it from corroding further. 
the full thread, partial thread. The partial threads belong inside the screws, which are up top. I'll get that one started. And these are pretty tight tolerances on these bridges, so don't don't bolt all of these down until you have at least two, and preferably four of them all touching, caught on the uh, the inside. Kind of go north, south, east, west. It's just uh, a good way to balance it and ensure that they're going in properly. Go grab the bottom here. Tighten all four up. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna we've already serviced that spool. We have the grease on that. I'll load that in. And we can assemble the side plate. Now again, two different sizes on these screws. Long screws go in the cross posts. Short screws go in the real seat. I always encourage folks to take pictures, <coughs> excuse me, or get schematics so that you know where these pieces and parts go if you get lost along the way. This one's a fairly simple uh, real design which is one of the reasons why it'll seemingly last forever. There's fewer pieces and parts to break. You never have to service drags. Um, only a few moving pieces and parts, so a nice metal spool. This one can last a long time. It's lasted a long time already. And I suspect it would have a long time to go if you just do the minimal of service here. I think the only thing that really does these reels in is broken side plates, which you can't get anymore. But because this is a, um, a plastic side plate, um, what happens is if you, you have a fish on and you hit a rail, that shatters, and that, uh, and you're done. And you're done. Now, for those of you that happen to have this reel, you don't have to search uh, eBay or a used parts supplier just for the 190. Most side plates in that whole Beachmaster Baymaster series will work. They may not match up exactly in terms of the design of the reel. For example, this one's got some cross hatching on the inside. This one's got the lighthouse etched scene in it. You may not be able to get an exact duplicate, but they will uh, they will match up. Look at that. What a beautiful little reel. Been around forever. Spins like a champ. All we have to do then is put the handle on. A little bit of corrosion on the handle while I have that uh, steel wall out. We'll grab that real quickly. Here's my paper towel to get the excess off. The excess off that board too. It simply bolts onto the gear assembly. Now, if I didn't put the oil, uh, the grease on there, we can put oil in there now. Just put the uh, screw button back on. I have a, a very wide screwdriver here uh, because of this. Uh, you you want to make sure that whatever slot the screw has got, you match that as close as possible. Don't go trying to put a small one in here. All you're going to do is, is kind of tear that up and over time you're not going to be able to remove that screw. There you go. There's your circa 1950-60s uh, Pen 190 direct drive reel. Okay. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, please like it, subscribe, tell your fishing buddies about it. I'm trying to grow this channel. I welcome subscribers and I welcome you to uh, stay tuned for the next one, which uh, I post basically about two times a week. And I would uh, welcome you to continue watching and to uh, continue to uh, uh, mention Second Chance Tackle to your friends and fishing buddies. So thanks again. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.